Hi, I'm Arius from Emily's Photography and in this video we are going to look at the latest release of Photomate. Now that's version 11 and then I'll be using the Nexus 7 running Android 4.2.2. Now when I'm at home at my desktop PC I love to work on Lightroom but when I'm out I always take one of my tablets, my, either my 7 inch or my 10 inch tablet with me in my backpack and then I'm shooting with iFi. So while I'm shooting all my images go directly to my tablet. And then wherever I stop or exactly where I am on the go, I love to be able to edit my images, to resize them, to add a watermark, to send it as an email or social media. Now with the latest release of Photomate, I can do exactly that. And I will show you, so I'm excited to bring this to you today, that you can see exactly what the capabilities of the latest release is and how easy it is to now do all that that you normally do on Lightroom and you can now do it on your tablet. So let's have a look at it quickly. When you open Photomate, you'll be welcomed by a very nice, fast and responsive browser that you can use to navigate through the folders on your device. Now in the left hand corner at the top, you're going to see a Photomate icon. And I love this feature. When you select that, it's going to give you a drop down coming from the side. And it's got your favorite folders. And you can see at the bottom it says um, plus add folder. Now at the top I've got my iFi folder selected so when I'm shooting all my images go directly to the tablet and when I open Photomate I just select on that and I can see all the images I've taken. Below that I've got my normal folder that I've selected that's, that you can see here right now and then three folders that comes from my network. So you can also add your network folder so when you're at home or whenever you're close to a network that's got pictures that you've already added to that you can already access that as well you don't need to go to the PC to do that. To get rid of the menu, just select the icon again, it takes it away. The next option we've got is called filter. As you can see, it's off at the moment. Next to that, there's a little spanner. That's to select the option for filtering. So you can filter by date or time. Um, a star rating, that's the one I always use. I find it very user friendly. Now I'm going to say go to this folder right here. And at the top right next to the filtering, before I show you how the filtering works, because it's really important for your workflow, there's an option called quick view and this is really great if I select that it's going to give me a larger view but it's also got the rating system at the top and that's how I rate my images so at the bottom I've got this nice slider that I can use to select the specific images or you can just drag over them like that and you'll notice some of them have already been rated there at the top as a five star for instance this one has not been rated but you can just go and select the stars and you just drag them as you can see I can select it very easily I can just quickly go over the pictures like this and if I want to compare something maybe this image to the one um, that's coming off this one those two little blocks at the top if I select them it gives me the compare function and this is very nice so I can choose the next image and I can see which one is best and if you look at them obviously you'll notice I chose the five star on this on a specific one right so, that, so that's the quick view function you can also hide this at the bottom just by double tapping well, not double tapping, I think, single tapping, yeah, single tapping. It's going to hide the one at the bottom and tapping it once again, it's going to bring the bottom bar up. And then you've got stars at the top. If you select that, it's going to take the rating system away or you can turn the rating system back on again. When I go out of this mode, I'm still in this folder, but now I can activate the filtering because I've already previously rated a bunch of images. So I just select there to turn the filtering on. And you're going to see it's only showing me specific images from this folder, which is much better than seeing the entire bunch. If you've got like 100 pictures, just to choose the images that you want to work on and then just filter them. Right next to the filter, like I said, it's the spanner. If I choose that, it's giving me all the options for filtering and you can choose exactly the way you want to filter your images. Now, next to Quick, we've got Develop, which is a very exciting module. I will show it to you a little bit later at the end. So the next one is slideshow. So when I choose that option, it's going to turn, or it's got, yeah, it's basically going to turn my tablet into a, um, a little photo frame. And you can also adjust the duration between each image. And also you'll notice it goes through different types of um, transitions between the images as well. So this is very nice. To get out of this, it's also very easy. You just go to the back button right there, and it's going to take you out of the slideshow view. 
Now right next to the slideshow you're going to see a SD card type icon. When you select that it takes you to external media or the external card that's on your device. Next to that icon or basically that icon was now replaced at the top of another icon which allow you to, 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 um, to get images from your camera to directly connect your camera to, to the device. Um, basically if you use and with the Nexus 7 if I use an OTG cable you can look at the video on the screen now you can select that video to open an, obviously another video and that will show you how I connect the camera to my Nexus to basically take the images directly from the camera to the Nexus 7 everything is on that video so I'm not going to do that again to save some time otherwise this is going to be one lengthy video now I'm going to go to the photo mode icon at the top and I'm just going to choose the second option there which takes me back to my main folder view of all the folders in. Then the last icon is three little spots right there in the corner. If I choose that it's going to give me more options. Now in here I'm going to just turn on that, that filtering at the top. I just want to turn that off. Okay, now you'll notice when I choose that option at the top, I've got network access. So you can access your network, you've got am uh, camera import, and then a very cool feature, if you've got a camera geotagging or you've set your iFi card up to geotag, you can go show on map, and it's going to give you a map and the pictures that was taken in that specific area. Very, very cool. I'm going to go back, go back to this menu. Then we've got convert all images. Now I'm just going to open it up now because I'm going to talk a little bit more later when we've done editing a few images. I'm going to explain exactly what you do here but this is basically where you can take a bunch of images, raw files included, and then render all the XMP settings on those images, even add a watermark and resize them at the same time and then you can export them all. Right, I'm going to go back back to the more options menu. Then you've also got multi-select here. Yeah, I will show you multi-select a little bit later when we're done editing. And then we've got very important preferences. Now this is very nice because it shows you exactly um, how you can make the program more user-friendly for you. Now for instance, um, this is a non-destructive program. So when you are editing your images in the develop module, when you move from one image to the other, it automatically creates XMP sidecar files. So it's, it's, it's the same as working in Lightroom where you work in a non-destructive environment. But all those XMP files is really going to clutter your, your display of your images. So I've chosen mine to hide XMP files. That's just one way of making the program more user-friendly for yourself. Then very nice gallery settings. If you go to gallery settings, there's a new option called um, default preview method. And I love this option if you choose that. You're going to see it says always ask, full screen, developing and quick view. Now how this works is that in a moment when we select an image, you will get um, this opening up to ask you what you want to do. Do you want to go to full screen, to developing or quick view? You can now turn this function on to give you options at exactly how you want the program to interact. Then there's um, slideshow settings, full screen settings, watermark settings. You can add in your watermark or the watermark position. Everything is very easy to set up. At the bottom we've got extensions. If I go to extensions you're going to see the raw extension. Now, this is very very important. Photomate does not only read the JPEG which is embedded in the raw file. You can actually do raw data decoding but for that you're going to need the raw extension. So you'll also find that on the um, Android market or you can buy it from here. Then you'll also see some other extensions here as well like the um, screen share but we're not going to focus on that right now. I'm just going to go back again. Now I want to show you how the develop module works. I'm going to go to the raw folder. The reason for that is I also want to show you how the program um, handles raw files. So if I go to quick, sh to quick view, but before I'm going to go to quick view, I, just, I don't want to forget this. When I select an image, say for instance that one, this is where the default um, comes on where you can choose exactly what you want to do. I can go to either the full screen developing or quick view. So this is where this will happen um, when I'm going to be developing or going to develop later on. I'm going to sidestep that option but that's exactly where that is needed. So if I'm only going to do one image, maybe that one, I can say right show this to me on full screen and it's going to give me, um, it's going to load the data of the raw file giving me all the settings. I've got the rating system, I've got histogram and from here I can also go to develop or I can choose only that one image and say go to say developing. So that's one way of going there but I'm going to work with more files, um, a lot more files in one go. So I'm going to go to quick view. 
and you're going to see it takes a little bit longer for the images to come on nice and sharp it's because it's much larger raw files but you'll notice it still handles it very well very quick even in the compare mode it's still very quick to render two very large files you'll notice it updates pretty fast okay, I'm going to turn the compare off now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the files that I want to work on now I think I'm going to use this one I think that's going to be the first one give that a five star rating I'm going to skip that one and then I'm going to use this one five star rating and then the last one five star rating I'm going to go back I'm going to turn, turn the filtering on. Now remember, this is only five images in this folder. It could have been 500. So it makes it very easy for me to see only the images that I want to work on. Now that we've got our images, I'm just going to go to develop. And then right here in the corner, we can see the images we've got selected. The more images you've got, the taller this bar will be right here where you can select your pictures. Now do keep in mind I will be using RAW files. If you also want to use the RAW, remember to get the RAW extension and then we'll be using XMP files, which is great. So you'll soon see that we're working in a non-destructive environment, which is great. Right here in the corner, you'll notice I've got my EXIF data very nicely displayed. And above that, I've got a few options. Now the first one is crop. Now the nice thing about this program is they've made it really user friendly to crop your image. You've got sliders here in the right corner and on the image you've got four circles. So I can just choose the circle and move the circle around or I can use the slider to do my cropping. Very important, we've got the aspect ratio. I can choose the aspect ratio, make it maybe three by two. You'll notice it's now a landscape crop. I want to have a portrait so I can just flip it around to that icon right here. So I've got the normal proportion that I need for portrait and then I can just do my crop. Now I've also got here rotate um, clockwise and anti-clockwise and then show grid. Now show grid is very important if you are a landscape photographer and you want to maybe straighten the horizon. So you just turn that on. Now I'm going to do something very stupid. I'm just going to turn the image like that which does not make sense at all and then I'm going to say save. The reason I want to do this is I want to show you that we are working in a non-destructive environment. So I'm going to go back to crop and then I'm going to reset it and I'm going to say save again and you'll notice the image has changed back there. So you're not damaging your picture when you're working in the develop module. Right next to that you've got your reset. Um, that's basically when you've done your changes like for instance say I'm doing this uh, exagger exaggerated edit. I can immediately just press reset and it's going to take the image back to normal. Right next to that I've got save as JPEG and then my exposure markers. That's the same as in Lightroom where you can turn your over and underexposed areas on or both if you feel you want to. So you can see where your image is overexposing or underexposing. Right now to show you the menu that we've got here, we've got tons of editing. We've got white balance, brightness, exposure, contrast, recovery, full light, blacks. Whoops, I think I touched a few settings there. It's okay, I'll reset them now. We've got clarity, vibrance, saturation, distortion, scale, vignette amount, midpoint, sharpness. As you can see, just a ton of stuff here. Noise reduction, even color noise reduction. And then a few icons here at the bottom, which I will show you very soon. I just want to reset this image. Now to do the adjustments, you can either um, press on the minus or this side on the, on the line you've got there. It used to be a plus. I don't know why. Maybe my tablet is cutting it off there. I don't know. Now, to not make this clip go insane long, I do not want to do a lot of editing on the image. I want to do it very basic just to show you how it works. Now, I think with this image, what I want to do is just to take the saturation down to give it a much more muted look, but then add a lot of vibrance to bring the red colors on the shirt back. And I think that looks awesome. I can maybe even saturate, desaturate a little more. I think I like that. Then I want to save this as a template. Another cool feature that we've got, I can say save as template. I'm just going to choose the test and I'm going to save that. Now I can now go to another image and apply that template. For, in, for instance, I can go to the third image. And then I can say load template, choose that template and you'll notice that image has just changed. So if you've just done a few minutes of editing on a specific image and you don't want to redo it, just save a template. It's very, very easy. Right now also we've got here a way to see the before and after. So I can go to these icons, this row of icons, and there you can see the original. You'll notice the colors of the reds there specifically. I can choose that side if I want. You'll notice the skin tones. 
and you can choose exactly the way you want to look at the before and after. You've also got an option there called fast preview that will allow you to speed it up a little bit if your device is not that fast. Now another cool feature which I really enjoy is this redo and undo buttons. Now to show you exactly how cool this is, I'm going to go to saturation and in this image I'm just going to slightly every time just increase the saturation a little. This is to create basically um, save states of um, the actions I've done. Now as you can see this is completely oversaturated but I can now undo it and you'll notice it only goes down a little at a time. You'll notice every time I select the undo it only goes down a little until I finally go back all the way to where we started when we resetted everything. So and then I can go forward again if I want to. You'll notice I can keep adding the saturation step by step by using the under redo. So that's very cool. I'm just going to load that template again on this one. So those two images look the same. On the middle one I'm going, going to add a little bit of exposure. Maybe a little full light, some blacks, maybe a little more, some clarity, maybe something like that, maybe a little bit more full light. I think that's that. So once I've done that, I don't need to save anything. I can just go out of this screen and you'll notice the images will update right there. So there's all the new edited images I've got. Now from here on out is where I save. So I can now go to that icon again at the top and I can say multi-select. This is where the multi-select comes on. You can either select them all three like that or you can just use this icon right there. It will select them all. And then from here on I can just choose this icon which will take me directly to the um, convert all images. Now choose directory at the top is where you choose directly you want to save the files. I've already done that. It's called edits. Then I've got choose size and I can choose the size I want. So now I can also resize this making it very easy to email. So let's make it say small, say 800 pixels. Then I've got render XMP settings which is very important. You want to render the settings you've, you've created. And then render watermarks. That will also put a watermark on the image. And then an option, you'll see select mode, which got a bunch of options. I always just choose convert to JPEG because I want to just save my, my JPEG file after I've edited my raw file. And you've also got choose quality when you can uh, set the quality you want the file to be. And then finally, just start now. Very nice thing is when you're doing this process, it, it will tell you exactly what it's doing. It's opening the file, it's rendering, it's saving, it tells you everything that it's doing. Now you'll notice when it's done, it's telling you the folder is empty and that's because I've still got the filter rating on. I'm just going to turn that off. I'm going to see my three images and you'll notice it's also got um, watermark watermarks over it. Then I'm going to go back to options and then multi-select, select them all again and then choose the share icon. So I'm going to choose that and from here on out it's very easy. I can like, as you can see, I can print, I can send to Dropbox, Facebook, email, anything I want to. So it's pretty easy to get that done. So that's that for looking at Photomate. I hope you have enjoyed this video showing you exactly what's possible with Photomate 11. You can also visit the website for some other what's new information or in the future other videos as well. So you can always keep going back to the address. So then that's all from me and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.